Hey guys, welcome back to Morgan Hill Farms. So it seems to me like the days are just passing by so very quickly. I don't know if it's just that I'm getting older and it just seems that way, um, but it seems like the months are going by so quickly and before we know it, winter is going to be here. So we've been focusing on really stocking ourselves up on hay for the goats and the pigs for the winter. I've also been finishing up that last minute summer preserving. Uh, believe it or not, I did have some peppers still in my refrigerator in the garage that were still hanging on for me. So I've taken care of those. I'm working through the last of my 40 pounds of turmeric and also through some ginger uh, that I harvested just a few weeks ago. So all of those things are pretty much preserved now. So we're really winding down, but definitely getting ready for winter. We are also getting ready to breed our goats in a couple of months. So I've got to dry them off, which means that I have to stop milking them so that they can go and get bred by the buck that they visit every year. Um, but believe it or not, we are actually already preparing for the spring garden as well. You may be wondering why I'm standing in front of this big pile of dirt and wood. And that is because I just wanted to share this with you guys really, really quickly. So this is hardwood mulch. Um, we actually have a tree service. Um, we reached out to them and they drop their wood chips after they've done a job in our area. So they'll drop the wood chips along with the branches, the leaves and everything kind of thrown in there. And they'll bring a big truck and they'll dump it for us on the property. And all we've been doing every week is just simply turning this. Um, if it gets a little bit dry, if we've been dry for a few weeks, I will take a little bit of water and kind of put it on this. But every time when Nate uh, goes ahead and turns this every weekend, it is nice and hot and steamy inside. So it is breaking down to a beautiful compost. Compost for the longest time always seemed really overwhelming for me. Um, just, you know, how many browns, how many greens do you have to add to it? What temperature do you have to get it at? How big is the pile? Um, and then when I finally did get some of my own compost, it was so full of weed seeds because it had never heated up enough for me. So I'm a little hesitant to throw that all over my garden this year, but this is looking beautiful. And by springtime, this is going to be a beautiful, nutrient rich compost for us. And because it is a hardwood compost, there's no animal manure in it. So I don't have to worry about any persistent herbicide that might be in this compost and that might poison my garden. If you guys have watched me for any amount of time, you will know that when I put my garden in, um, I bought $3,600 worth of soil that was contaminated with persistent herbicide and it knocked out all of my tomatoes that year, most of my peppers, it was just a disaster. So I am really happy to report that if you guys are thinking about doing compost and you wanna knock that expense out for this coming season, this is definitely a way that you might wanna go. So now let's get into the main reason why I really wanted to come on and talk to you guys today. This past weekend, I had gone down the road and happened to see that there was quite a good amount of traffic um, on a particular highway. Now I say highway, it's not like a four lane highway, it's just a two lane highway. Um, it doesn't have a lot of traffic on it. Well, on this particular day, the traffic was backed up three miles one way just waiting. And I thought, man, what is going on? Well, come to find out, we had a local company in town that wanted to do a food drive for uh, Hurricane Helene victims. Now, remember, I live in upstate South Carolina, so we did not see the devastation that Western North Carolina saw. Um, you know, a few people did lose their homes, but mostly we're looking at just a lot of tree debris and things like that. So after I did a little bit of research on this, um, people were reporting online that they had waited in a three mile line and they had waited for three hours just to get a handout of food. And in an area, like I said, that wasn't devastated by the hurricane, that to me was very surprising. That to me says people are not okay right now. People are not able to afford food. When you are willing to take three hours of your Saturday and wait in line for a few meals handed out from a company, um, that to me says something about our economy. And so I wanted to share with you guys some statistics that I came across. Um, some of these are from CNBC, some of these are from uh, CNN, some of these are from Bloomberg, but they're saying that 40% of American families are one paycheck away from poverty. And get this, 59% of American families are one paycheck away from homelessness. That is just staggering. That is 
extremely, extremely concerning to hear. They also say that 60% of American households are not saving for an emergency. And 40% of households, even though they have jobs, are struggling to cover basic necessities. Bloomberg even said that people making between $100,000 to $150,000 a year are worried about how they're going to cover their bills next month. Now, when you think about somebody making $150,000 a year, that is $12,500 a month. Now, that's before taxes and insurance and all those deductions come out. But think about that. Somebody making over $12,000 a month is worried about how they're gonna pay their bills and expenses. I don't know that I've ever heard anything like that in the history of our country, somebody making that much money. It's just, it just really speaks volumes to where we have come as a country. The total amount of household debt in the United States in 2024 is $17.8 billion. That is an increase of 30%. And credit card debt, that has increased a staggering 48% since 2019. That is just astronomical. So you might be saying, you know, what kind of bills do these people have where they have this kind of debt? Well, the average home right now costs $404,000. If you've got a car, you're looking at an average $735 a month to pay for that car. The average new car right now is $50,000. That used to be the price of a home. And I remember just a few years ago in 2019 when I could look at a home that was $300,000 and feel like, man, if you could buy that home for $300,000, you had made it. You had the American dream. You were living the high life. And now for the average home to be $404,000, Man, I mean, first time home buyers, people just making an average salary these days cannot get into homes. Mortgage applications are at an all time low. Um, mortgage rates, even though the Fed has cut rates, mortgage rates are back up to 7.3%. Um, I talked to my friend who's in the mortgage industry and they said that they are, um, they're facing losing their home right now because of the fact that mortgage applications are down so low. Um, this is a couple that really has done well in our area. Um, and just because of this economy, uh, they are having to really shift their lifestyle to accommodate uh, the lower income right now. And I think a lot of American families are facing this. Let me just tell you guys really quickly, just some of the price increases that we've seen over the past four years. A new set of tires is 10% more. Food at the grocery store, they say, is 25% more than four years ago. But when I go to the store, like when I used to buy a bag of nacho chips, they were 75 cents at Aldi. Now they're 229. That's an increase of over 200%. Chicken thighs with the bone and the skin on used to be 69 cents a pound on any day of the week. Now they're 179. That's over 100% increase. Um, and the list just keeps going on. We've all seen the prices of eggs, the prices of milk. They've all doubled, if not tripled. The price of gas when Trump was in office was 152. I remember filling up for 152. Now down the street, it's just about $3. That has also doubled. So the inflation numbers that they're reporting to you and I do not reflect what we are paying, what our wallets are feeling, what our paychecks are feeling, and what our bank accounts are reflecting. It is nowhere close to what the American family is dealing with right now. But with all of that said, don't worry because there is a little bit of a silver lining here. Big screen TVs have decreased by 18%. So if you're looking for an affordable Christmas gift this year, maybe a big screen TV might be on your list. I'm actually really kidding about that. I don't think a big screen TV would be a good investment right now. Maybe some mud boots, maybe some extra seeds for your garden, uh, maybe some extra water storage, things like that. Maybe a better choice for you in this economy. So I'm telling you this because I feel like the more people I talk to, the more people are telling me, man, if Trump just gets in, we're gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be better if Trump can just win this election. And I don't think that that is the case. Now, I do believe that we will definitely have two different outcomes depending on which candidate gets in. We have one candidate who is going to continue the spending, continue the hemorrhaging at the border of just letting this influx of illegal immigrants and criminals into our country, destroying our economy and destroying the life that we know as Americans. And we do have one candidate 
If that candidate gets in, I do believe that we will cut the spending. I do believe that we will close the border. And I do believe that we will begin to heal. But the problem is, is that you cannot just stop spending after you have been doing this for four years um, at an alarming rate and then say everything's going to be okay. Let me just put it in numbers that we can understand. If you take the national debt right now, that equates to each citizen. Now it didn't say adults, it said each citizen. So I'm assuming that's me, that's each one of my kids, that's my husband. Each citizen would have to pay $103,000 to the government in order to pay off our debt. Now, if you racked that up in a credit card debt, you could say, you know what, today's the day I'm gonna stop spending and I'm gonna get my life in order. Just because you stop spending doesn't mean that good times are here. No, you have to go through a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of heartache, and a ton of sacrifice to pay that debt off, to change your behavior, to change the lifestyle that you've been living, um, and just alter your whole way of thinking and your whole mindset to get that paid off. And that's not going to be done in a year. Most likely, that's going to take many years to repay that debt and recover from those poor choices that you had made. So I just wanted to tell you guys that just to show you kind of in real numbers what it's going to look like for us. We may even see inflation spike even if uh, the right candidate gets in. We may see inflation start to go up. And are your pocketbooks ready for that? So I wanted to tell you guys today that you really need to continue to prepare. And if you haven't started yet, you need to start now so that you can weather the storm that's coming up because we're still facing hard times. Right now we have the holidays coming up. It is a great time to stock up on baking supplies like flour, butter, sugar. Butter right now is $4 a pound here, but I can pretty much assure you that it's going to come down to $1.99 a pound. Now there will be a limit on it, but that's okay. You can come back to the store the next day and go ahead and pick up your limit again and just keep doing that until you have a few months worth of butter in your freezer. But those baking supplies are a really great thing to stock up on right now. Also, we usually have what we call loss leaders in our grocery store ads, things like a turkey that might be 39 cents a pound. I don't know if we'll see it that low this year, um, or a ham that might be 98 cents a pound. So of course there's a limit on that, but um, I mean, I'll just go in and I'll tell Nate, hey, look, we're gonna have a little date, meet me at the grocery store. We're gonna pretend like we don't know each other. Um, you know, he'll think that that's kind of interesting. And at the end, I'll walk out with two hams for 98 cents a pound and put those in my freezer or two turkeys for 39 cents a pound if I'm lucky and get those in my freezer. So that's a really good way to get some meat for a very low cost. Just don't get stuck in that grocery store buying the high ticket items. Go in, get the things that are on sale right now. Um, also, really, you need to think about holes in your preps. Um, have you thought about medical supplies? Have you missed maybe um, those self-adhesive bandages? Have you missed maybe stocking up on some ibuprofen? What about toiletries? What about your pantry? Have you used most of one item and maybe not been keeping track of it? That's very easy for me to do. When I bring in so much of an item at one time, I think, oh, I'm good, you know, and then I end up making a meal over and over and over again and I go through that. Or my kids use something and don't tell me. So just make sure that you are checking your stockpile. Make sure that you're going through and making sure that you have everything that you need. Um, also, if you need to top off any fuel for heating your home, any fuel for your cars or extra fuel tanks, I would suggest doing that. I just had to pay $3.10 a gallon for propane to top off my propane tanks after Hurricane Helene. Um, I really wasn't happy about that, but according to my propane guy, we're really not looking at prices coming down unless we stay pretty warm for the next two months, and I'm not sure that that's going to happen. So I'm going to pay a little bit, but um, I'd rather have those tanks full um, than, you know, partway empty just in case something happened. Also, maybe try to think about your Christmas a little bit smaller this year. You know, um, for my kids, they're asking for a lot of name brand things. You know, I think that just kind of comes with the territory of having teenagers. I don't think I'm going to be getting them those name brand things. I think we're going to be getting mud boots. I think we're going to be getting things like, I don't know, soap in our stocking this year. We're going to be getting toothbrushes, toothpaste in our stockings. Um, that's a really good way to fill a stocking and actually get some practical use out of it. Um, what about socks? Do your kids need winter jackets? Things like that. Um, maybe a new knife. 
maybe a lighter that's waterproof. Those types of things will really help to build your stockpile and you're already going to be spending some money for Christmas so why not put it into something that will help you in the future to be prepared for something um, some unforeseen emergency. And the last two things that I want to encourage you guys to do is to change your habits. If you're going out and you're getting coffee every day and you don't need to do that anymore to save a little bit of money, try to do that. Um, if you don't need to make an extra trip into town and you can save some gas, try to do these things. Every tiny bit helps. Um, and the last thing is to try to pay off debt. The less money that you have going out at the end of the month, the more money that you'll have in your bank account to kind of, you know, work towards paying for an emergency that you might not know is coming. Um, a little bit more money in the bank just in case, or a little bit more money to put towards preparations, maybe putting towards animals, or just anything like that. The more money you have going out to interest into the banks, it's just making them rich, and it's keeping you a slave. And so guys, I really encourage you guys to maybe try to do some of these things that I've talked about. Um, understand that just because an election goes in your favor doesn't mean that we're automatically in the clear, because we really won't be. Um, try to hedge yourself now against what's coming, because it's going to be a long, hard road to recovery if our candidate gets in. And if the other candidate gets in, then we are just going to see more and more of the same. And I think that it's just going to compound and just snowball quicker and quicker and quicker. And I think that we will see the demise of this country happening very quickly. So anyways, guys, uh, the sun is not with me. It is going down. So I am going to sign off for now. But thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you guys have any other suggestions or anything that you are doing to kind of, you know, prepare and uh, save yourself from the future inflation that we might see and just maybe anything that might come along with this election, please leave that in the comments below. But thank you guys so much. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Your day.